And welcome back once again um, to the third round of the Stuttgart Regional Championships. Now I'm joined here by another co-caster, Bersh. How are you doing? Hey, I'm fine. So we had like two great matches in the first two rounds. Germany against Italy and then Spain, Sekiem and Pokalex. I was very excited to uh, watch it from back. I made sure that this stream is going on, but now I'm so excited to be finally yep. behind this desk, join you for this very exciting game that is coming up. Yeah, me and, and Flarion, of course. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, for the third round, we now have a German face-off here uh, with Joshua Schmidt against Jonas Wiege. Joshua, um, some of you might be a little bit more familiar um, with him, knowing him as a Yu-Gi-Oh player, yes. as he's uh, very, very um, successful there. Um, has had a lot of great success um, with that, which, which is a card game. So naturally, you would think, oh, maybe if he also plays Pokemon, he might uh, play the TCG. But no, he's actually also pretty, pretty good at the video game. Um, his probably best achievement, um, amongst others, he was in the top 16, I believe, in the um, UK National Championships in 2015. Yes, and um, he finished top eight. And top at eight. The at Dreamhack Regional U one last year. Yes, last year in Leipzig. So yeah, he's also he like. Uh, we became friends with him the first couple of times he showed up at those tournaments and now he's like in the loop He still like kind of knows what is going on, but doesn't yep. play a lot But if there is a tournament that is convenient for him to attend just like this one for example um, He yeah, I, I talked to him briefly a little bit He said that yeah, yeah, he's been playing for one week um, got a team off of a friend and um, now yeah, he's sitting here um, in this third round um, with a 2-0 and record mm -hmm. so um, yeah it looks like so far things have been going quite well for him and um, yeah uh, he will be playing against Jonas um, who is already a regional champion by the way we should mention he won the regional championships in Bremen and um, um, yeah he wants to do things of course um, repeat things I should say um, here in um, Stuttgart now um, yeah, he is one of those players. He has had so so much success with Komoo in this year's format. Of course, in Bremen, we were still playing last year's format, um, where he was using the Lilligan and Torkoal team. Yes. Um, and won the regional with that. But ever since then, um, with a the new format, he's been playing Komoo. I think almost exclusively, um, doing well at a couple mm -hmm. of mid-season showdowns, winning um, I think one of them and getting second place at two of them. Yes. So dominating his he's local scene really. Yeah, he's one of my local players. So he would come and visit me at my mid-season showdowns in Frankfurt, um, and he played that team before. I think he had Whimsicott in the beginning, but mm -hmm. then he thought, hey, let's let's try let's try it, Illumise. Eh? Yeah, Illumise, um, one of those Pokemon that um, really just sh like came to fame um, with this new format. Um, I was actually using a very, very similar team um, at the tournament we were just talking about in mm -hmm. Leipzig uh, with Whimsicott that didn't have any attacking moves. So players figured out that, hey, Lumi's, like it has the exact same moves. It can run that moveset. And um, also it looks a little bit cooler and um, the stats are a I little bit different. Yes. And the typing, of course. Yes, typing is different, uh, which affects him in terms of rage power. So you cannot ignore that rage power, uh, which Whimsicott can do. But on the other side, I don't think every player is familiar with that Eevee Misa, especially that Joshua Schmidt, uh, who might be familiar yes. with like Yu-Gi-Oh cards and like <laughs> BGC in general, but uh, Pokemon you don't see too often. I, I'm not entirely sure if Joshua knows exactly what this Eevee Misa is going to do in this game here. Yeah, that's actually a very good point. Um, Joshua's team, on the other hand, I haven't talked about it a lot because we have already featured the same six Pokemon on stream before. Um, Zarkon was using it in the very first round. Didn't win um, a game there, so Joshua probably wants to change things up there. Um, but it looks like maybe those um, two were like in the same testing mm -hmm. group, or we're talking about similar concepts. As Joshua also, um, again, for for Joshua, I know that he um, doesn't really build his own teams at yeah. this point because um, yeah, he just doesn't have the time or he doesn't invest the time um, into playing Pokemon too much. But um, yeah, if he gets a team and if he's prepared with that, which he did like the past couple of weeks, um, then he's definitely something uh, or s uh, like a force uh, yeah, that mean, you should expect I think he and respect. He, he depends on his friends giving him teams, but like he trusts them, and then he goes for the like more standardish, mm -hmm. solid teams that can then uh, work around. He knows how that game works, so if you give him the tools he needs to beat opposing teams, then he can definitely do that. And we see Mega Gengor coming out here next to that Ilmiza. I expect a double protect here, maybe Tailwind coming up from mm -hmm. that Ilmiza. Yes. But Zapdos and Landorus, I remember how these two Pokemon like caused a lot of <sighs> trouble when you played that team. Yeah, I don't remember any of that. Um, <laughs> Zapdos and Landorus is what I lost to um, against Flavio Del Pidio in Leipzig in the regionals finals. Um, here we are seeing Earth Power though from this Landorus, so um, 
Yeah, no Earthquake, however, uh, it seems to be a Choice Guard variant, at least it moved before the Zapdos, um, that is matching the Tailwind of the Yulomi. So, um, now, intuitively, you would think, oh, well, uh, Gengar just trapped in the Zapdos that just used a Tailwind, and Yulomi has Prankster Encore, so he can just lock in the Zapdos there. Why did Joshua do that? However, the reason for that is that um, his Landorus most likely is a um, Choice Guard variant, so by matching the Tailwind, it forces out the Mega Gengar of Jonas right now, because Earth Power is going to uh, KO it, and so, even if Jonas um, like switched out the Gengar right now and went for the Encore, next turn there's no Shadow Tag in play anymore, yes. and you can switch out um, the Zapdos. So, it looks like Joshua has a plan of what to do in this matchup, and um, kind of probably already knew what Jonas was going to use, um, since Jonas is really famous for, you for piloting this team. Um, so, it looks like Joshua is going into this matchup with a plan. Yep, and exactly how you mentioned Gengar switching out, he had to bring in something that can, that, uh, can take that Earth power, but as we saw, that Earth Power does more than 50% damage, so a second um, Earth Power will be enough to pick up the KO on that Como. Yes. And Illumisa is not going to do anything about it. Like uh, The very important part about that Tailwind on Zapdos, even though he's encored into it now, is that um, Gengar and Illumisa can go for that this core, uh, excuse me, disable Encore combination, yes. thanks oh. to that Tailwind. And now, I mean, yeah, Tailwind on both sides up. Uh, Zapdos can easily switch out. Lander is already did 50% damage with the Earth Power, yeah. so it doesn't look too good for uh, Jonas Vigil here. And um, thinking about the, the the Pokemon of choice that Jonas switched in here, I think intuitively you would want to bring in the type of Bulu potentially yeah. because that can also do a lot of damage to the Landorus. However, seeing as Jonas switched in the Komoo makes me think that maybe the last Pokemon that he has is not the Togekiss or um, the type of Bulu, but Incineroar instead. So that could be valuable information for Joshua, seeing that Jonas um, like just switched into this Earth Power and will take another one and this could be enough to get the KO but it is Komo hanging in there will be able to go um, for its Z move right there but Joshua was able to also switch in the Tabu Fini um, which won't take any damage here from um, the Clangorous Soul Glaze yes, that is coming out. But there. since Lanorus is a flying type the damage on Lanorus won't be reduced here and uh, the Z move on that Landorus should should deal a lot of damage actually yep. and we saw how damage rolls played a huge role here because the first Earth Power was more than 50% and the yeah, second one... Like, it looked like it would just be enough to yep. get the KO there on the Komoo. But it barely missed the KO, getting off the Z move now, which then helps Komoo to outspeed the Landorus potentially, we have to see that out in the next turn. Um, but yeah, Landorus still on the field, if that Komoo is not outspeeding it, then yep. Landorus can just decide which Pokemon to attack and pick up a KO. Then it comes down to who's protecting, but Komoo against Tabu Fini, isn't looking too good. Yeah, so like Joshua kind of has to make a choice here with Landorus. It should still be the fastest Pokemon on the field, even though um, Komo now boosted its like all its stats by one stage. Um, the defense stats don't really matter because, of course, Earth Power would still be enough to get the KO. And the speed, also against the Landorus at least, shouldn't matter since Landorus, um, usually with a Choice Scarf, still outpacing the Komo. So Landorus can now either target down the Gengar or the Komo. Um, I think Gengar is probably a little bit more of a natural target because Gengar um, threatens the Tabu Fini, whereas Komo can't do anything against Tabu Fini at all. So um, now, if Joshua decided to target down the Gengar, and Gengar protects, and Komo gets the KO on Landorus, then Joshua would at least get the retaliate KO on the Komoo. Um, however, the question then is, does he have something that can take on the Gengar um, for his ne next Pokemon to switch in? Mm -hmm. And it looks like Jonas just wanted to get in the Gengar just for to get Shadow Tech active for one turn, and now calls it back into the Illumis, will take the Earth Power, and now um, can knock out that Landorus of his opponent with a Flamethrower, interestingly enough. Yep, so Landorus goes down. The question is, what is Tempo Fini going here? Is it going straight for an attack, or maybe setting up a Calm Mind? But we actually see a Waterium Z coming okay. off. Um, that is... <coughs> yeah, that should be probably going into the Komoo. Maybe he was expecting a Protect to come out from that Komoo and wanted to ensure the KO yep. even um, through the Protector. So revealing the Hydro Vortex here. And yep, it is going into the Komoo. Will, of course, take the KO. Some more information for Jonas, uh, knowing that the Z move is something that he has to worry about. Yep, uh, I really like that play because Z moves dealing damage through Protect. So if that Komoo decided to go from Protect, um, that would have still picked up the KO. Uh, Landorus and Komo going down here. Uh, I expect the Ko um, Gengar to come in and then trap yeah. whatever switches in here for Yo Joshua's side. Um, I think... Oh, it is Metagross. I think Gengar is in a pretty decent spot because um, Sludge Bomb is doing a lot of damage to Tabafini, Shadow Ball taking care of the Metagross, yes. and then in combination with a potential Fake Tears on that Illumise, that is enough to pick up KOs. Yeah. And I don't see how Tabufini is like dealing 
a, like any pre like not too much pressure on either Idomis nor Gengar. So if that Gengar takes care of that Metagross soonish, and then with a combination of fake tears, it might be enough to take care of that Zapdos as well. Depends on how it's trained. Um, so even though Como is going down and not doing too much here, other than picking up the KO on the Landorus, Yoshua is still in this game. Um, yeah, Jonas still um, yeah, saw the spot there, and um, yeah, the other thing that is important to mention here is the fact that even if Joshua like called the move correctly and say protected his Metagross right now, um, Illumis with Encore can just like go for an Encore in the next turn and prevent uh, Metagross from moving. So there's actually a couple of combinations where if True. Jonas's Gengar's Shadow Ball is able to knock out the Metagross of Joshua in one hit, he could just go for say something like a Fake Tears into the Tabu Finio of his opponent this turn and Shadow Ball into the Metagross, and no matter what Joshua does. Um, there's not really too much um, that he can do because then the next turn, you, like um, depending on what happened the previous turn, you could go for an encore, like encoring the protect, and then um, also targeting the Tabu Fini to knock it out of the sludge bomb. So um, yeah, very Jonas clever though, play to, to going for the protect. double protect instead, yep. scouting out for some moves of his opponent. Um, he probably was hoping that there was some sort of like protect coming out, maybe that he can encore. Uh, that didn't happen. Joshua just going for um, some attacks. And um, one more thing that is uh, worth mentioning about the Tabu Fini going for Hydro Vortex the previous turn is the fact that um, that would have actually um, been able to hit through um, through Encore or Disable, mm -hmm. um, and now that is not an option that he has anymore. So yeah, um, le let's say he would have went for that um, Coal Mine before, even though if he gets Encore into that, that's probably what you were going to say. If he's getting Encore into um, Coal Mine, he's still able to fire off uh, Hydro Vortex for that, but uh, that's not the case anymore. Um, I think that fact has just made sure that Metagross is not taking that Shadow Ball. Yeah, yeah, um, there it is actually um, quite an interesting role. Depending on how you tr uh, like EV or Gengar, um, it can get the clean KO on an uninvested Metagross. But if they invest like a little bit of bulk, you kind of want to go for the factors to um, ensure getting the KO. And as you were saying earlier, Tabu Fini not actually threatening the Gengar all too much. Um, Launching the Muddy Water, of course, it's a little bit of chip damage, but Gengar still there, still threatening with a Sludge Bomb, and um, Illumise did get the accuracy drop though, so um, potentially he could miss um, Fake Tears now. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're still at a spot where Gengar can just like um, attack, target that Tapu Fini down, and if Tapu Fini decides to protect, we still have that Encore thing going yep. on. Um, so I think the safest play would be just to attack into that Tapu Fini. And then we have to keep in mind that there's still one Pokemon in the back for Jonas. We haven't seen at all yet. Yes. Uh, it actually misses the Tabu Fini with the Fake Tears. So this Sludge Bomb should not be enough to get the KO. Tabu Fini hanging in there. And now um, Joshua will be able to get off two moves. Thunderbolt will definitely bring the Gengar in KO range for Muddy Water. And Muddy Water does connect with the Gengar. Of course, Jonas not happy with that outcome. But Gengar is going down. And now Illumis doesn't have any any move that can really do damage at all. So whatever the last Pokemon is for Jonas will have to do the trick here. And um, we kind of already ruled out Tabu Bulu and Togekiss. So we're really expecting this to be Incineroar, I guess. Yes. And it actually is Incineroar. Um, I mean, that Tabu Fini is down to... 20 HP about that, so um, a combination of fake out plus attack might be enough there, mm. and then Muddy Warrior is not boosted yet, uh, it has to hit as well, so in Cinema are not too bad in spot here, but I think like just going for those Thunderbolts, and then depending on what item Zapdos is running, I yep. think Zapdos will be just able to uh, take home this first game for Joshua. Yeah, so um, yeah, it's, uh, it's still not perfectly clear, because um, in Cinema um, can go for knockoff, of course, to knock off um, a potential berry on the Zapdos. Whereas, um, if Incineroar of Jonas has the berry, then Zapdos has to walk, like, eat through that. Um, we are seeing Fake Out, and it's not enough to get the KO. However, um, Jonas was able to set up the Tailwind, ensuring that his Incineroar now definitely outspeeds the Tabu Fini. Will be able to get an off an attack there, but Thunderbolt dealing a quite a decent chunk to that Incineroar. So Zapdos really. Um, has to do the trick now for yeah, Joshua, but, but I think actually, yeah, it could one potential game that came into my mind here is protect the Tabu Fini and Thunderbolt the Illumisa to pick up the KO uh -huh. and then prevent Encores from going on. Um, but then he still has to go into that Tabu Fini because I expect a uh, Jonas to attack the Tabu Fini right now. So protect might come in handy there. Yeah, if, if Thunderbolt is then enough to pick up the KO. Yeah, if Joshua has like Roost, for example, then that would definitely be um, a wise play to remove the Illumis uh, beforehand. But um, if that's not the case, then I don't really think that there's any other move besides uh, Thunderbolt that he wants to use right mm -hmm. now. So in Encore, not that much of an issue. Yeah. So Ilumisa instead is going for that Protect. Uh, probably checking where those Pokemon are going. There's a Flare Blitz going into that. Yeah, it is into that. 
Um, Tabufini picking up the KO, so it is Zapdos against the world. Yeah, maybe maybe knockoff um, is a little bit more like correct because you take a little bit of recoil, like just a couple of HP. But uh, in the end, it m it might matter. Mm -hmm. um, we are seeing Thunderbolt not activating a potential barrier. However, um, thanks to the flare Yeah, he can still he can yep. still go for flare blitz and um, activate his own berry, and then. He still needs two, like he needs three more attacks, I think, to take out the Zapdos. He would need like Flare Blitz, knock off Flare Blitz. Yep. And Zapdos, on the other hand, can um, can probably knock out Incineroar with two, two Thunderbolts, Thunderbolts after the Flare recall. Blitz, yeah. uh, it's still very close and um, could be anyone's game, but I think Zapdos might still be in the advantage here. Yep. And we saw how that um, accuracy drop changed the whole game. Because yes. otherwise, um, that type of thing is just going down and yep. not being able to pick up the kill on that Gengar, and then Gengar just. Yeah, around. just another fake tears combination yep. into the Zapdos, and then Incinero would have been able to pick up the game, but that's not what happened. Yep, but it's not over yet. We have to see. Okay, fake tier is not doing like it doesn't really matter what Illumisa yeah, is going for here. I expect a knock. Oh, knock off! So he risked Ooh. that that Thunderbolt is now enough to pick up the KO. Yeah, if that Thunderbolt goes into Incinero and just gets the KO, then that is the end of it. And then actually is. Huh. Okay, uh, curious choice here by Jonas going for the knockoff instead of the flare blitz. Um, of course, we haven't got confirmation about the item on the Incineroar, but um, yeah, it, based on the damage, uh, it's probably not um, an assault vest. And so, yeah, maybe though, flare blitz, I mean, I don't know. I think, yeah, flare blitz probably was just the correct play there. I think so too. Like, just poking yeah, just their two, own berry. Two flare blitz also could have been enough to knock out the Zapdos now, looking, yeah, at, looking at how at much that damage knockoff knock knock did. damage, yes. That might actually be enough. Yeah. And then, depending on what the item is, we saw Whew. the Citrus Berry Zapdos before. Oh, that's true. That's um, true. So that have prevented it too. But he, he, uh, the, he knocked off like a Vicky Berry. So we, uh, we've already just saw that. Oh yeah, true, true. Anyway, Joshua is going to win the game. Uh, it that felt a little bit weird to mm -hmm. me in the end. Uh, maybe we get a chance to ask like both of these players, or like one of them at least. At like least one of them. Whoever wins, um, what they were thinking here. But I think Flablitzing the Zapdos, um, yeah, probably would have gotten giving him a little bit better chance to to win this battle. Yep. Uh I think uh at the end of this game he should come to the same conclusion that Flavitz might have saved him like another option for that game. Um but I mean it's all about the next two games. It's not over yet. We are playing a best of three set. So he has the option to come back, win the second and then go into third game, bring it down to the wire and then it comes down to who takes that game. But like as I said, it's not over yet. Uh we are going in team preview here. Uh, both players looking like taking their time to make sure, yep. especially Jonas. He was—I don't think he was super happy with that game, especially after that um, accuracy drop. But I think both teams have like all the tools they need to defeat each other. Yeah. And it comes down to which player yes. decides, like, goes for the better moves. Yeah. On the other hand, now um, we shouldn't just like keep stressing on the accuracy drop and the miss, but also the fact that Komoro survived that second Earth Power, which was like a sliver yep. of health, also like really changes up this game quite a lot because. Um, yeah, Landorus was in a fantastic position against um, the Pokemon that Jonas brought to the battle against the Gengar um, and the Incineroar that we saw uh, later on. Mm -hmm. So, um, do you think Tepu, like do you think Tepu Bulu would be a good choice looking at what uh, Joshua brought in the first game? Um, I think that Zapdos and Landorus is pretty much optimal um, in terms of what you can lead against um, Jonas's team. Uh, there's a couple of more options that Joshua can go. Um, I think Tabu Fini is also very important to bring against the Komo. And then for the last slot, you can bring either Incineroar. Or um, or Venusaur, in my opinion, uh, because both of them, their purpose is to to beat that Tabu Bulu, which on these teams um, usually is uh, mm -hmm. Choice Scarf. So the purposes of that last slot is to um, be able to beat the Tabu Bulu. Um, like if your opponent cannot switch anymore, like if they're down to the last two Pokemon, like for example, if they're only um, left with Komoo and Tabu Bulu, then of course the Tabu Bulu can take care of the Tabu Fini, and then all of a sudden um, the Komoo can wreak havoc. But um, if you have the Venusaur or the Incineroar, then both of them can take an attack from Komoo and then um, take out the um, Tabu Bulu. So um, it looks like Joshua is kind of prepared for like all scenarios. But um, yeah, we are seeing a switch up all in terms of strategy. Um, Instead, we're seeing the Togekiss now as an attempt to counter this Landorus and Zapdos lead that he must have expected to come out from Joshua again, yep. um, just based on how well it worked in the first game. But if you consider that, that Landorus was especially trained, uh, it might have the move Sludge Bomb pretty sure mm -hmm. and then a combination of sludge bomb and thunderbolt might be like i don't know how close it comes to the ko on that token case because token is really bulky here um but it's not like super safe for gengar and to have that token ne next to the side yeah the problem with that though would be that um, landers had to lock itself into sludge bomb and if you manage to um somehow like set, like if you somehow set up tailwind and then bring in komoo 
Um, you get like a free boost. Mm -hmm. Sludgeform doesn't do too much to Kamo and also it doesn't do anything to Gengar. And then you can just like keep on doubling up the other slot and the lander is stuck there, locked it into, into Sludgeform. On the other hand though, Earth Power can be easily redirected by the Togekiss for ages. So um, yeah, Jonas asking some new questions with this Togekiss in his lead. Um, however, it also means that the Zapdos will be a lot more difficult for him to deal with. <laughs> There's actually Sludgeform coming off and what we didn't consider is that Sludgeform Thunderbolt picking up the KO won't give um, Jonas the chance to even set up Tailwind there. Uh, yes, that's true, but... Um, oh, <laughs> Tog is actually faster. Or oh, this might be, this might be raw. a rare move yeah, yeah. in raw. <laughs> okay, so this is one more option. Um, going for the Sludge Bomb, but then also um, knowing that, hey, like if things don't go to plan, <laughs> uh, this might be difficult for me. So instead he's going for the raw, but Komo is probably the Pokemon that Jonas wanted to see here. Of course, we don't know um, his last Pokemon, but... The Landorus, like what you want to, what you want to do with Komo really is get it into positions where it can go for the Z move and mm -hmm. take a KO. So you boost and you also like take a KO and you don't take any damage, and then like that's pretty good. Yeah, so <laughs> the Komo switching is perfect for Jonas here, being able to set up Tailwind now uh, faster than the Landorus, able to pick up the KO with that Z move. I expect the Tapu Fiend to switch in here though. Um, and on the other side, Raw is also an excellent move against Komo. -o. Yeah, though there is the risk of um, the follow me coming out from this Togekiss, so it will be interesting seeing whether Joshua is going for the Raw or if he decides to just match the Tailwind and switch in his Tabu Fini. Um, I would assume that that is the preferred option here because, like, if you Roar and they follow me, then Togekiss will be Roared out into Gengar or Tabu Bulu potentially. Couldn't be, like, that wouldn't be too great. So um, Jonas was expecting the Tabu Fini to switch in, presumably. Decides to bring out his own Mega Gengar now, trapping everything in and um, going for the Clangorous Soul Blaze once again. Of course, um, won't affect the Tabu Fini, but since the Zapdos is flying type, um, it'll yeah be like the full powered. Yep, uh, I'm really excited to see what Zapdos is going for because yes, there might be that wall, uh, but as we talked before, that Togekiss uh, was supposed to like just just follow me and uh, redirect that. So potentially didn't even go for that wall. Yeah, I think, it, I think it should be Tailwind. It might be Tailwind here, uh, but then Komo Gengar is still in a great spot. Um, so let's see what happens here. A lot of boosts and yep. a Thunderbolt. Okay, okay. interesting. No, no raw, no Tailwind. Hi. Thunderbolt, no paralysis thanks to Mr. Terrain. So now Gengar and Komo in a really great spot. Mm, I think um, keeping Togekiss, like even if Togekiss went for the follow me, I don't think it's super bad to keep it around. Um, but now you're looking at a boosted Komo and a Gengar next to each other in Tailwind. You can't match Tailwind, so the Landorus won't be able to outpace the Gengar. And now uh, it's one of those positions like Komo is probably just going for a protect. Um, Gengar might go on the offensive, like try to target down the Tabu Fini in the next turn. Uh, so it's like it's like a scenario where Joshua really has here. two Pokemon in here that um, like Zapdos can't take any KOs this turn. Tabu Fini can only take a KO on the Komo um, with Moonblast. However, there's still the Z move, so. It's just like uh, one of those situations that you don't want to find yourself in. And he and doubles into that Tabu Fini with a Flame for a Sludge Bomb combination yeah. coming off here. And based on the damage in the last game, that should be enough to pick up the KO. And, and it, it is. actually is. So Tabu Fini nice is going done. down here. Zapdos now has the option to set up Tailwind or Raw out. Oh. But <laughs> another thing that Yoshua <laughs> might not know, that Komo's ability is soundproof, preventing <laughs> any Raws from... like we n Not even us were thinking about it. Like. Um, in the previous turn where we were like, yeah, he might roar out that combo, but actually soundproof, preventing roar. So, <laughs> yeah. great play from Jonas there yeah. and not even where we were thinking about that. Yeah, I mean, it didn't make much sense to roar there, in my opinion, anyway. But now, of course, yeah, like with soundproof, there's just like no option for Joshua to remove that from the field. And yeah, again, if he had set up the Tailwind, then his Landorus um, <laughs> would have been able to outpace... Um, to outpace Jonas' team uh, once his tailwind is over, but now I think like for this game at least, there's nothing that Joshua can really do, and yeah, he's just going for to forfeit here. That's just, like one of those things that <laughs> it doesn't come up very often. But like if you if you use Roar or if you use Komo, that's something you should always be aware of. Yep, um, and that I mean that was a lesson for Joshua. But as I said before, this is the best of three, so we are going now to game three. Uh, Joshua, keeping in mind that he can Roar out that. Uh, Komo, <laughs> yeah, and potentially using those options to maneuver a little bit better around that. I think Togek has actually worked pretty well in that game. I'm not really sure if I'm um, like such a huge fan of the Togekiss. Of course, um, Jonas was able to win this game, um, but um, it's hard to see whether that was actually because of 
Um, like Togekiss, Togekiss. I mean, he set up Tailwind, uh, like Illumis could have done the same thing. He, of course, threatened to follow me. Um, mm -hmm. He took the Sludge Bomb, drew away the attention um, from the from the Gengar very early on, so that Landorus couldn't do what it did in the first game, and just go for Earth Power into the Gengar continuously. So for that, it definitely was good. Um, I'm thinking about more options, like maybe um, there, could have, there could be an option for Jonas to go with Togekiss in the back, like bait out Earth Power early on from the Landorus, mm -hmm. and then switch in Togekiss and like protect Gengar or something, and then just keep on follow, like keep uh, like going for follow me, for example. Um, that could work. Like something, there's like always like weird scenarios with Gengar's shadow attack ability um, that you have to be like aware of, and where it's like, oh, like oh, is he actually aware of the fact that hey, maybe if he did this, then I could switch in. For example, another another one of those things is where if um, if you lead Mega Gengar. And um, like against Zapdos Landorus, I actually thought about this uh, quite a bit after <laughs> after losing the finals. Uh, something you can do is like protect Mega Gengar and switch an Incineroar, and then the next turn you go for the Fake Out disable. on the Landorus and disable it, mm -hmm. um, because Zapdos won't be able to prevent you from doing that. And so um, yeah, that that would also like lock out the Landorus from the game for a couple of turns at least. So yeah, yeah, that that's been actually quite good option here to shut down the Landorus. I don't know if you, uh, Jonas is going to think of that. Yeah, there's a couple of plans that you just like have to keep in mind, and that um, where it's like, oh, like I know about this plan, but does he also know? It? Does he yep. expect that? And um, that leads to um, a couple of, or can lead to a couple of turns where it looks like kind of confusing about what is going on because um, both these players are just like getting in there too deep, you know. So um, for this time though, we're just seeing the Togekiss and the Gengar. Uh, Joshua though, Think switching things switching up, up with um, Zapdos and Incineroar. Okay, very interesting to see Incineroar as the lead option here, um, but there's one very interesting part. Incineroar is immune to Prankster thanks to its dog type. So mm -hmm. potentially if you expected that Illumisa to come off, um, then you can easily go for Fake Out and then yep. any other move coming out. And then, um, I mean, Flavlet is great, Knockoff is great, but there are like more moves to Incineroar. He might carry Taunt, which is great against Illumisa, which is great against Togekiss, and maybe even Gengar to prevent any disable action from going on. Yep. Um, so he can... Well, switching out, interesting. Okay, switching into the Landorus, um, out of, of all things. Um, one thing I wanted to say about why I'm not a huge fan of leading Incineroar in this matchup is the fact that um, like the one Pokemon you really want Incineroar against is the Tabu Bulu of your opponent. And um, so there's like a couple of scenarios where you really need to like bring in the Incineroar when Tabu Bulu is already on the field for Intimidate and fake out pressure. And um, also since most Incineroar do not have Protect um, and since Tabu Bulu do have Super Power, there's a couple of um, scenarios where uh, the, the Gengar player or the Komo player like hits the Tabu, uh, sorry, hits into the Incineroar a couple of times and then um, the Super Power from Tabu Bulu can just take the KO on Incineroar mm -hmm. once it is trapped in because you cannot Protect. So um, now Incineroar is trapped in there, and for example, um, if um, Joshua didn't switch into the Landorus and wasn't threatening the Gengar or something like a Sludge Bomb plus Close Combat or something, could just knock out the Incineroar just because like it doesn't have Protect. So um, yeah, we will see how things will play out um, and whether Jonas did even bring the Tabu Bulu. Uh, but now we're in a little bit of a different situation um, as the Incineroar just went for a taunt into the Komo that just switched in. Yep. And it's now Incineroar Landorus against Gengar Komo. Komo itself is in a really great position here. He can fire off the Z move. I mean, Earth Power is about 50%, but then what is Incineroar doing to it? Not too much, so mm -hmm. he's able to get off that boost. But we saw how Landorus, with his Choice Scarf, is still faster than a um, boosted Komo. But there's Togekiss to help him out for that. Yep, um, a nice target here. Yep. Um, coming up by Joshua, expecting the Gengar to switch out here. But yeah, there was nothing that Joshua, like this time around, Joshua couldn't switch into his Tabu Fini as he did in the, the previous two times that we were seeing um, the Klanger Soul Blaze coming out from this Komo. Um, so now he will have to take uh, the full damage with both the Incineroar and the Landorus, and we've already seen how much damage that did in the previous game. So um, with Togekiss now joining the field, it will be able to redirect any um, Earth Power that could potentially come Komo's way the next turn. Yep. So I felt very sorry for Komo in the very first game because yeah. it only got off like um, a Z move was then down to like one percent, and then the flame for picked up the KO on uh -huh. Landorus, but not doing too much. But in this very third game here, um, Z move coming off, Togek is next to his partner here, and it will be just be able to fire off a lot oh, of oh, nice very play clever. Coming out. Okay, expecting the Togek is to come in, um, okay. taunting it. So no follow me, no tailwind coming out from Jonas, but um, which means 
that um, the Landris on Joshua's side should be able to get off another hit against the Komo if mm -hmm. he wishes to do so. But um, yeah, of course, the Komo now being boosted would threaten both the Incineroar and the Landris um, um, with a lot of damage with clanging scales. So maybe Joshua wants to switch into the Tabu Fini, but on the other hand, there's not really too much of a reason for Togekiss to stick around. So. Uh, there is a chance that Jonas switches out the Togekiss into Mega Gengar, so now Joshua <laughs> could go ahead and Earth Power this Togekiss and like have everything planned or, like all along. Yeah, and looking He's at that damage like from that free Earth Power. No time though, and Joshua not really playing too many tournaments, so he might be still not like not be used to to the timer here. Let's see uh, whether he's able to put in his move in time and whether um, that will play out. So there is Togekiss switching out. It could be the Mega Gengar. It is Tabu Bulu though. Okay, so. Um, Jonas probably also accounting for the fact that there might be um, this Earth Power going into that slot. Yep, uh, and Tabu Bulu finally first appearance here and this best of three. Um, I think even if that lander is timed out, it doesn't really matter because choice carved and then going for that yep. Earth Power anyway. Uh, Tabu Fini joining the field here, but Komo and Tabu Bulu is really good against. But based on those Oath Powers we saw so far, I think um, that Earth Power was like a high roll at the very beginning. Because now, like, 2 or 4 is not dealing too much damage. Um, he just did get the special defense boost. Oh yeah, that's true, that's true. Um, so, Lander is going down. Now, Komo and Tabibulu uh, against what is left for uh, Joshua and Zapdos. That Tabu Fini and an Incineroar. I don't think it's too bad here. Hmm. Um, the Actually question is, what kind of fighting move does he have on Komo? Yeah, that could be an interesting question. Um, also, Taunt just wearing off, so now he could go for a Protect. protect. Uh, something I'm wondering about is whether um, last turn Joshua might have just like he could have stayed in with Incineroar and like double up into the Komo with um, Earth Power and like say Flare Boots. Mm -hmm. um, it's I'm not sure if that would have been enough to get the KO, but after clanging scales, of course, um, Komo yeah um, gets a drop in defense. So that could have been something to consider. Um, in, in the end, Joshua decided to go with the Tapu Fini. Maybe that's why he was taking such a long time thinking about that. Now though, Incineroar being a nice switch into uh, Komo and Tabu Bulu, but as we were saying, Komo feel like can feel free to protect this turn and then go what for like an attacking move um, into the Incineroar in the next turn. Do you expect the uh, Hydro Vortex to be enough in this case? Because yes, he could protect, but there's still the Waterium Z we saw in the very first game. Uh -huh, I don't think it would be enough through the protect. Okay, um, but yeah, no protects coming off actually. Fake out into that, and then we see close combat coming off. Yeah. Is that enough? Yeah, that should be enough, I guess. Yep. And it is. Oh, so Incineroar goes down. Um, Tabu Fini, uh, we still need to see which move it decided to go for. I don't think Muddy Water would be enough to get the KO on um, Komo right here. Um, it is the Moonblast, so where does it target though? Into the Komo. Okay, so Komo will go down, and um, meaning that, um, well, the Tabu Bulu is still on the field, can still lock into any move, and if um, Jonas decided to switch into Gengar right here, um, well, I mean, Joshua is down to his last two Pokemon anyway, so there's not really any like way but for him to still switch. There's still this Zapdos. He can still set up Tailwind though. Yep, and I, I think it's it will be tricky to play around that Zapdos. Yeah, at the same time though, it also will be very difficult for, for Joshua to knock out the Tabu Bulu of his opponent. Because I don't think Moonblast and Thunderbolt should be enough, so even if um, Joshua had the speed advantage, that Tabu Bulu should be able to get off at least one more hit um, to like get the KO on the Tabu Fini, for but example. But it's also intimidated, and there's no grassy terrain up, so I don't expect a Wood Ammer to be enough for that Tabu Fini here. Uh -huh. um, and then, what hammer locked? Like, Zapdos not uh, taking too much damage from that either. Yep. Uh, so I think long term it will come down to how Zapdos being yeah. able to take yeah, this yeah. game, or yeah. how is Jonas going to defeat that Zapdos? Because Tabu Fini against Bulu and Gengar doesn't look too good here. Okay. Oh, we see Horn Leech. Horn Leech, no wood hammer, and, and a critical hit. Uh, that's very unfortunate uh, for Joshua. He would have liked to to like get one more hit yep. off. With Joshua is not super happy about that. However, at the same time, yeah, we were saying it. Um, the Tabu Bulu can't really do too much against the Zapdos either. So, like, even though like they were shaking hands already, I guess, um, but Zapdos could, in theory, still come back into this game. Um, I guess Jonas can just like call back his Tabu Bulu, um, bring it out again, like reset grassy terrain to get some recovery on his Mega Gengar, um, and Zapdos couldn't um, like take advantage of that since it's a flying type Pokemon, and then also Tabu Bulu could lock itself into like Rock Slide if that is the rock move that most Tabu Bulu carry. We're just seeing some Horn Leeches and we'll probably see like Air Slash, but 
if that Zapdos has Roost, this could be like could still take a while. Yep, it's not totally over yet, even though they handshake that. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of handshakes before the game's actually over because there's so much that can happen here. Yeah, like um, like if you shake hands, then you could also like just forfeit, you know. Yeah, but that's exactly. Like, but but of course, Joshua knows like, hey, I'm still in this game. Like I still <laughs> have Zapdos, so like. Yeah, <laughs> and I think the best play here is to actually switch out a Tabu Bulu, reset that Intimidate. And follow me maybe, just yeah. to make sure that there is no um, like Thunderbolt like predicting the switch. Potentially, we also haven't seen all moves on Togekiss yet, uh, yep. so it has Protect, Follow Me, and Tailwind. Tailwind. So there's like, and Air Slash. Yeah, so that should be enough. Okay. Yes. Um. So that was the last move. Yep. Yeah, but now if. Like again, like if the Zapdos has Roost, um, we have already seen we've seen Roar, Tailwind, and Thunderbolt, and um, it hasn't gone for a Fire type attack against the Tabu Bulu so far. So Hornich not really doing anything, and um, yeah, let's wait and find out. Yep, uh, I expect the Roost to be the fourth move, and okay. actually it, it's revealed here as so a Roost dealing, uh, sorry, healing 50% damage um, or like HP huh. of that Zapdos. Yeah, now Jonas will probably like realize. That um, that like well he can't he can't keep going like this um, because well like if he just keeps on going with like Horn Leech and Air Slash that's not going to be enough that's not going to knock out um, the the Zapdos so yeah instead he will need the um, the Gengar to come in at some point so we really think um, follow me and switching into Mega Gengar is probably what he wants to do and then like Rock Slide and Sludge Bomb can do a decent chunk. Yep. Also Grassy Terrain will have like not only increasing potential grass moves. Um, and like the damage of Grassens, but also healing up damage on that Tabu Bulu and, ta uh, and Gengar. Uh, so I uh, think I really would have liked to see the follow me here to prevent any paralysis yeah. or crit. Oh, and he gets it. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> because like like what is Togi is going to do? I mean, Tailwind. He was faster anyway after um, Joshua's Tailwind like mm -hmm. runs out, and he probably wants to like he would have wanted to protect his Gengar for one more turn anyway. Um, but with how Perilous is working now, thanks to Tailwind, it's um, like the Gengar speed is even out again, uh -huh. but there's of course the chance to not able to move thanks to that paralysis. Yeah, yeah, and like Togekiss' Tailwind just doesn't really accomplish too much of anything. So mm -hmm. um, because Scar, Tabu Bulu, and Gengar are naturally yeah. faster than Zapdos anyway, true. But now that Tailwind is up, Air Slash might help with flinches. Yeah, that's so that is like the true. only case <laughs> where Tailwind might be uh, crucial here. Yeah, potentially. Um, yeah, potentially a slight inaccuracy, but at the same time, Joshua also he had to call the switch and like had to land the Thunderbolt, and then he also had to get lucky and get the paralysis. So mm -hmm. maybe um, not like not too big of a mistake on Jonas's end here. True. Uh, but I'm still also a fan of that like potential follow me, which you mentioned before. Uh, we see the Air Slash, so Tok is now faster than Gengar, of course. Um, and a Sludge Bomb combination, maybe there's a Poison which will speed up the end of this game a little bit. But there's no Flinch, no Paralysis, and Thunderbolt should yep. be enough to pick up the KO. Yep, yeah, so it's Gengar and Tapu Bulu <laughs> again. <laughs> it. Kind of funny. Um, like, if he has Rock Slide and Rock Slide is enough to get the KO, then like, cool, like that's the game. But if he thinks that, oh, maybe Rock Slide is not ga getting the KO, and then, oh, there could still be the Wiki Berry on the Zapdos, uh, he could actually go for something like Horn Leech into his own Gengar and, and uh, like, hope that Gengar doesn't get fully paralyzed, because then he would get off the, the Sludge Row and bypass the Berry. However, at the same <laughs> time, that's if tricky. But, like, with, <laughs> the per with the paralysis, you, of course, you can't really, like, pull that trick off anymore. So he's going for the Rock Slide. It does connect, and now let's see if it will be enough to knock out the Zapdos. It should Single be. Single target should And be there enough. it is. Yep. So uh, Jonas, in the end, able to take home the game. Um, but um, yeah, uh, in the end, maybe Zapdos. There could have still like could have been some scenarios where uh, Zapdos could have taken the game. But Joshua, after winning the first game, Jonas was able to pull things back. Um, of course, like probably Jonas's experience here um, with his team that he has played so many games with. Um, whereas Joshua, as we were saying, only had like a week to practice with the team that he's using here. Yep. Um, I was actually talking to Jonas before this game. And he was like, "Oh, I'm going on stream again." So actually, he was on like he was featured in previous tournaments twice, and he like lost both games. So he was like, "Yes, will I finally be able to beat my stream curse and <laughs> go out as the winner of this game, and then yeah. losing the first game?" Yeah, exactly. So that was like really intense for Jonas. I think he's he's really happy with his 2DS, which made him famous for winning the <laughs> regions with that. Um, but now 3-0 into this tournament, and of course, if you guys have checked out. Um, the ECP ranking, which we show in the downtime a little bit, Jonas is actually in 
uh, competition for those top 16 spots yes. in Europe to qualify for day two at the World Championship. So I think this 3-0 is really like boosts his confidence to go like further into this tournament and get a chunk of CP here and then keep his um, like actually he's 15 when I'm looking at the list. Yep. So he needs points to make yes. sure that he's still in race because just behind him they're like like a lot of players who are just waiting for those players to fail so they yes. can take their spots in top Yeah, 16. like uh, Rob Eckershark and um, Jens Arne Mackinson also in yep. attendance in these tur at this tournament, by the way, for example. So yeah, the race for the top 16, which will grant you an invitation to the second day of the Pokemon World Championships, mm -hmm. is of course on. Um, but um, yeah, we can we can talk about um, that with him in a little bit. And we will ask Jonas for a short interview if you have the time. And if we don't, then we will be back for the fourth round. Either way, we're going to a short break and we will be right back. Hello and welcome back to the winner's interview. I'm here joined by Jonas Wiegel, who was just able to win his third round and now he's 3-0. How do you feel after this victory, after you beat your final uh, stream curse after losing yeah. twice before? Yeah, I, I played on stream before twice and lost both, so I'm really happy that I can finally win on stream, yeah. Yeah, so that very first game, it was very close. Um, and we were actually thinking about a potential flare. Yeah, yeah, I misplayed. There. I misplayed in the end. I I could have flare blitzed with Incineroar so that my berry triggers. Yep. And that might have won me the game, but yeah, in the end, I'm I'm pretty glad that I managed to win the other two games. Yep. So it doesn't really matter. Thinking about that curse <laughs> and then losing game one, but being clutch and coming back, um, yeah. really happy for you. You're of course also like local player of mine with each other quite yeah. often. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Like one question we viewers might have, what is it about that Illumise? Yeah, Illumise, like after last year, last year, uh, Torco was my <laughs> trademark Pokemon. Now this year I was looking for a new one and I think I found it in Illumise. So okay. I don't want to reveal the set because the purpose of Illumise is to confuse my opponents. Oh so yeah, we were talking about that before, <laughs> that like not everyone is... Um, yeah, like not I, not everyone is aware of what it can do. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So let's not talk about it too much, <laughs> of course. But yeah, um, we, we saw some moves on stream. So yep, yeah. And of course, uh, there was Komo's first appearance on our stream. Uh, Komo in social media, a lot of conver uh, discussions going yes. on, controversial. Uh, what is your opinion on Komo, and uh, how do you prepare for like counters of Komo? Um, I think Komo got a lot of attention lately, so I wasn't really sure if it's the call for the tournament, mm -hmm. but I personally feel really comfortable with it. Okay. And I think the the most important thing with Komoo teams is that the rest of your team supports is it well and can deal with th uh, fairies and threats like the Japus in general. So okay. yep. I, I think Komoo is still strong and there's not there's not like one Pokemon that counters Komoo and its allies, so mm -hmm. I think I it's think pretty. It's pretty tough to hard count at this team. This with this specific, co specific uh, composition. Uh, we composition, talked about how yeah. Zapdos and Lando's like caused a lot of trouble. Yeah, Scarf Lando is is a pain for the team. Yeah, yep. that, that's true. But you adjusted and brought Togekiss. Yeah, another very interesting. Yeah, to here. Togekiss put in a lot of work in games two and three. It yep. deterred my opponent from locking into Earth Power, so I had a. Uh, more freedom with my Mega Gengar, so that was my game plan going into games two and three. Very interesting. Once again, congratulations, of course. Thanks. 3-0 uh, now. We are playing seven runs today. Yeah. So <laughs> there's still a long way to go to finish in the top cut, which is, of course, your goal. Yes. Um, is there, like, anyone you want to give shout-outs oh, to? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, shout-outs go out to a lot of people. Heinz, Knappi, Fezzi, mm -hmm. Serkan, and to uh, Strohkopfbande. <laughs> yeah, that's it. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, we will be back with the next round soon, so stay tuned and enjoy our downtime content. Adios. <laughs>